flood is a humanitarian crisis. But the phenomenon holds more significance than just mismanagement. It is a central phenomenon in religious scriptures as well. For one, you must have heard about how floods shaped the development of a particular Abrahamic holy book called the Bible. Well, it may be shaping the development of religion in 2022 as well. Hi and welcome to TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host, Tejas Vimal Hotra. And if you haven't subscribed to the TFI English channel yet, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to receive all the latest updates. Coming back to the story in this video, I'm here to tell you about a manufactured hazard which is known as silcher floods. Floods are not a new phenomenon in India. Millions of people have been displaced due to this phenomenon in politically independent India. Almost always, the policy experts have blamed it on mismanagement and carelessness by administrators and government. But we are in 2022 and it is tough for any government to mismanage something simply because anyone can record anything and make it viral on the internet. So what actually is the reason behind the silcher floods? Speculations are still being made, but evidences are hinting towards water jihad as a main cause of crisis. Four people have been arrested for breaking the structuring protecting silcher from the wrath of water gods. Their names are Kabul Khan, Mithu Hussain Laskar, Nasir Hussain Laskar and Ripin Khan. Firstly, Kabul Khan was nabbed and after the investigation, three others were apprehended by Assam police for cutting the Betu Kundi Dam, leading to the displacement of over 2 lakh people from Silchar. Informing about the capital police taking up charge for the investigation, Hemanta Biswa Sarma, the Assam CM, said, The Betu Kundi incident is a big lesson for us. The next time there is a flood, we have to post policemen at the embankment so that nobody can breach it. Regarding the Betu Kundi breach, CID has been asked to register a case in Guwahati. Now, the case for the Silchar flood shall be registered in Guwahati, people shall be interrogated in Guwahati, and all investigations shall be done from Guwahati. However, the arrests have left a question mark in the minds of the citizen of the country. The question is whether it is a new form of jihad against kafirs. In this case, Hindus, after all, one of the meanings of jihad is a struggle or fight against the enemies of Islam. According to the 2011 census, Silchar is a Hindu majority city with 86.31% of the population adhering to Sanatan Dharma. Muslims comprise only 12.17%. The percentages may change, but given the fact that there is a renaissance of Hinduism going on, it is highly unlikely that the ratio between Hindus and Muslims would have changed over the past decade. The rise of someone like Sarma who does not engage in Muslim appeasement politics is another reason why common Silchari feels proud of his Sanatani roots. There is no issue with Hindus being in majority. But among the adherents of Islam, there is a group called Islamists. They tell innocent Muslims that the rise of any group other than Muslims is dangerous for them. These Islamists are supported by fashionable left liberals. The narrative has been shoved down in Assamese Muslims as well. During anti-CAA protest, Sharjil Imam, an eminent intellectual for the Islamo-leftist lobby, has in fact threatened to cut off Assam from the rest of India. It is what this radicalism percolated down the common people. The innocent Muslims are asked to engage in various activities in the name of jihad, marrying Hindu girls and then softly coercing them for changing their religion is one of them, known as love jihad. Similarly, polluting food by spitting in, it is called thuk jihad. The biggest of them is land jihad where they slowly capture the area around the mainland and after increasing their numbers, they force the original owners to vacate the area. But all of them have been exposed and for countering some of them, laws are being put in place. Administrative machinery has geared up, but there is always a need for innovation. The quest asks us whether this is new form of jihad called water jihad. We hope we will find the answer soon.